If overthinking, stress, or sleeplessness are becoming too much, try listening to a guided meditation for free on the Women's Meditation Network. There are a dozen podcasts that provide hundreds of guided meditations each month, like sleep meditations, morning meditations, daily affirmations, meditations for anxiety, and even water and nature sounds. Just search for Women's Meditation Network in your favorite podcast player and subscribe to listen now. This is Optimal Relationships Daily, episode 1675, How to Deal with Toxic Family Members Without Losing Your Mind, part one, by Sabrina of TheBuddingOptimist.com. Hello, everybody. I am Greg Audino, your host and narrator here on ORD. I'm with you every single day, reading from some great blogs that discuss relationships in a pretty short time frame, typically 10 minutes or less. And this time, I'll be reading a longer post once again, so I'll be honoring that time frame and splitting it up between today and tomorrow's episodes. So without further ado, let's jump into the first part of this article on how we can have better interactions with difficult members of the family as we optimize your life. How to Deal with Toxic Family Members Without Losing Your Mind Part 1 by Sabrina of TheBuddingOptimist.com Family always comes first. My mom used to tell me when I was little, and for years she did everything she could to be the living embodiment of those words. She would slave for hours in front of the stove to cook for the entire extended family every holiday. She would take care of my cousins as if they were her own children, and she would try to help out everyone in the family, even though as a single mother, she was the one who needed help the most. So, when her relationship with one of her sisters became more and more frayed over the years, it crushed her and I felt her pain. There were days when we cried together, mourning the loss of family love and connection. After my parents separated, my aunt and her family were the only relatives we had left in this country, and now that she and my mother were falling out, we were truly alone. What helped both of us heal from the pain was the acceptance that not all family is worth putting first. When a family member is, as much as it hurts to admit it, toxic, there is nothing wrong with shielding ourselves from the poison. And in this post, I'm going to share a few tips on how we can guard our emotional health and happiness from the effects of toxic family. But to protect ourselves from toxic family members, we first have to understand what they look like. Signs of a toxic family member How can you tell if you have toxic family members in your life? Besides being hard to be around, here are some of the most common signs of a toxic family member. Number one, they're controlling. They have to have a say in everything in your life, from how you spend your money to who you date. They often use, I'm just looking out for you as an excuse to inject themselves in decisions that should maybe be made by you alone. Number two, they are overly competitive. They're determined to outshine you in every way possible. They're jealous when you succeed, and they're always quick to rub your mistakes in your face. Number three, they use threats. It's their way or the highway. If you don't obey, They will make life miserable for you. Number four, they are critical and dismissive. From the way you look to the way you cook, they've got something nasty to say about it, and they don't have any qualms about hurting your feelings either. Number five, they'll say one thing to your face and another behind your back. You never know if they'll twist your words to someone else or stir up unnecessary conflict while you're not looking. Number six, they blow things out of proportion. You're constantly in their bad books for little things that shouldn't matter. They make you feel bad, and you end up apologizing for things you don't feel sorry for. Number seven, they stop you from being yourself. Rather than cherishing you as a person and accepting every part of you, they make you feel like you have to hide who you really are. Number eight, they take a mile when you give an inch. They exude greed and have no shame in taking advantage of others in the family. They expect a lot and don't appreciate much but if you need help, they're nowhere to be found. Number nine, they love to complain. There's always something wrong with the weather, the food, their job, or their health. Every time you see them, it's a nonstop whining session that leaves you feeling down and hollow. And number 10, they instigate drama. There is never a peaceful moment when they're around. Tension, frustration, and resentment follow them wherever they go, and you're either caught in the eye of the storm or part of the collateral damage. If anyone in your family has one or more of these traits, 
you are likely dealing with a toxic family member. And over time, it can have a detrimental effect on you. More on this coming up, though. How toxic family dynamics impact you. We all have the occasional quarrels with our families. That's life. But if you're constantly embroiled in arguments with a family member, or most of your interactions are negative, it's time to do something about it. If you don't, it could have a lasting impact on you. Dysfunctional family dynamics can lead to problems later in life, such as increased aggression and trouble with anger management. Other issues include anxiety and difficulty forming and maintaining relationships with others. But you don't have to be a victim of toxic family drama. You can take control of the situation and stop toxic family members from draining your energy and damaging your mental health. How? Escaping from a toxic family. Five tips to help you reclaim your inner peace. Hear those on tomorrow's episode. You just listened to part one of the post titled, How to Deal with Toxic Family Members Without Losing Your Mind by Sabrina of TheBuddingOptimist.com. Okay, and there we have it. Part one from Sabrina, and surely an appetizing cliffhanger to be left on as we prepare to share part two tomorrow. There's a lot to think about so far. Already 10 bullet points on how to identify a toxic family member. And before we finish the rest in our next episode, I encourage you to maintain a sense of balance and accountability in your thinking. Yes, these are 10 good ideas to start with, But before picking up too much speed and uh, being quick to vilify such family members, instead, ask yourself, how can I maintain enough distance that my boundaries are respected, yet also give these people support and understanding, the very responses they may need to start treating people better, not to mention the very approach I may need to become more open-minded and sympathetic towards others. It's a really tough line but it's a highly important one too. So like I said, think hard about that. I'll leave you to it as we prepare to wrap things up today. Thank you so much for joining everyone. And of course, be sure to come on back tomorrow for the rest from Sabrina. That's where your optimal life awaits.